threatening Mexican cartel-related operations that have exploded in the Antelope Valley. It doesn't stop. We're 300 miles away from the border, and we have one of the largest illegal drug operations happening in the backyard in the high deserts of Los Angeles. It's accelerating to the degree that we were just... This looks like a video game. This isn't a video game. This is real. Those are assault weapons. I mean, they are way ahead of us. Some scary stuff, some great reporting. It's a clip from a new documentary, Cartelville, USA, made by our friend Jorge Ventura, reporter for The Daily Caller. It focuses on Mexican drug cartels starting illegal marijuana operations in Southern California and their effects on Americans across the country. Jorge with us now. Congratulations, incredible work. Uh, what was the most surprising thing about making this? What was the scariest? I would say, Leland, the most surprising was just seeing the amount of human smuggling and human trafficking that we are seeing connected to these illegal marijuana grows. And that right there is the consequences of just having a weak border because now we're seeing towns in Southern California like the Antelope Valley, Acton, East Lancaster, which are 300 miles away from the border, have a human smuggling trafficking problem. So that was one of the more alarming uh, surprises. So you're going to see in the documentary, we go embedded with San, San Bernardino County Sheriff's where they raid these grows connected to the Chinese mafia with Chinese nationals that were human smuggled and forced to work these grows. So we're seeing real life track, real life uh, labor trafficking. But the most, I would say, scariest part was just seeing the amount of weapons and how brazen these operations are in, in the wide open in, in the deserts. Uh, LA County right now has over 500 illegal marijuana operations, and these are all connected to criminal fractions. Incredible access you got. Uh, was this with law enforcement? Was this with state law enforcement, federal? How did it work? So we did, uh, we went a couple of days in bed with San Bernardino County Sheriff's, but the rest, uh, Leland, was, it was just us on our own. We had to get a little spy drone and we would fly that over the uh, drug operations. We would document the uh, drug cartel activity, wh whether it's with the water theft, the environment problem, but the human smuggling and the weapons. So we would go out day and night in these communities and just document what was happening in, in real time. And like I said, you go out there in the deserts, it's shocking just to see these huge, large operations. One of the larger operations that we discovered, Leland, in our reporting was in Phelan, which is near San Bernardino. Bernardino County, where we, we discovered an operation that was 10 acres long. We're talking about over a million dollars worth of drug product. And on that on that same operation, we have migrants that are being forced to work. So, you, I mean, you, it, the, the operation was so big, you would have thought Jeff Bezos and Amazon were running it. That's pretty stunning. 10 acres is big. Um, border crisis combined with this, and you've obviously spent an incredible amount of time on the border. Total encounters by the Border Patrol were now at one point. 515 million, 283,000 folks released, 95,000 notices to appear. Connect the crisis on the border that you've reported on and the documentary of the cartels growing marijuana. So what we're seeing, Leland, is when these um, migrants or unaccompanied minors, they get released into the U.S., um, the government is actually losing track of. So Axios actually put out a report in September saying one out of three unaccompanied children released into the U.S., the government loses track of. The situation got so bad that the DOJ, Department of Justice, is in running an investigation on the government to see if we are releasing unaccompanied minors to labor traffickers. And that's what we saw with our own eyes uh, operating and, and documenting what was going on with these illegal marijuana grows where these uh, minors, these teens, these women are essentially forced to work these marijuana grows, and they're they're armed with weapons as well because there's other cartels that they're battling for territory. And the people who are stuck in the middle of this are just regular working class citizens that you know the reason they move to the desert is to go is to get away from the crime, is to raise their families in a peaceful uh, town that's not you know like a yeah. big city like Los Angeles. But now they literally have drug cartels living in their own backyard. Yeah, and I can imagine some of these cartels are as well armed, if not better armed, than local law enforcement. Certainly better arm than just your regular uh, everyday street cop and far more ruthless. You keep talking about marijuana. I thought marijuana was legal in California. Well, Lillian, marijuana is. So the big kind of the big problem and what opened the floodgates to these uh, black market cartel activity is that in 2016, when Prop 64 passed, it legalized cannabis statewide. But another thing that Prop 64 did is it made illegal cultivation of marijuana plants from a from a misdemeanor, well, from a felony and downgraded to a misdemeanor. So now when these cartels, let's say they get raided by L.A. County sheriffs, if the sheriff can't find any weapons or human smuggling connected to the to the grow operation, then they're just going to get hit with 
with a five with a five hundred dollar fine. So for these cartels, it's almost like the risk is so low. Why would they not do it? Uh, they see no jail time if they're even they're even caught. I mean, they're making millions of dollars. A five hundred dollar ticket, a misdemeanor, isn't going to stop that. So we're we're hoping that with this documentary, it opens up California's eyes because a big thing is there's a huge misconception problem right now. You know, when people think illegal marijuana, they just shrug their shoulders and say, hey, it's not a big deal. It's probably just two hippie guys, a Chichen Chong, just growing weed in the middle of the desert. They have no idea that it's tonight to, to this huge criminal element, but it's the human trafficking and the violence that these cartels bring with them. And when you say cartels, these are the same cartels that are operating in Mexico that are bringing up heroin and cocaine and then who own the U.S.-Mexico border for bringing uh, migrants across. Exactly, Leland. So with the Mexican drug cartels, we're seeing that it has a connection back to Sinaloa. And one of the more shocking things is that these drug cartels, you know, they would, I mean, they still do this, but they, they would grow their drugs in Mexico and smuggle them to, through the border. I mean, now they could just grow that product on American soil. But we're also seeing it with the Chinese mafia. You know, Chinese, wow. Chinese mafia goes into Mexico, they make fentanyl, and they smuggle it through the border. But now the Chinese mafia is smuggling Chinese nationals through the border and forcing these Chinese nationals to work these grow scary, operations. Scary, scary thing to end on. Uh, Cartelville, USA, Jorge Ventura, great work. Have an awesome weekend. We'll see you Monday. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.